fruit prevents scurvy. Fact. Actually, that's not. It's overblown. You've been on a boat for weeks without fruit to see if it works? No, but it, it's not all fruit. It's true. There are certain fruits that will not just fruit in general. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs>
the nation was not free, but Indian forces were already making a mark on the global platform. of India and the Jammu and Kashmir dispute are well-known aspects of our history. Indian Air Force played a remarkable role in all of them. Nineteen forty seven was another crucial year for India and its forces. Excitement of independence and the thrill of coming out of the shadows of Royal Air Force were in power. Oh, that's insane, that's oh. tightness of that flight This path. excitement Open was air. soon damped by the invasion of insurgents from Pakistan into princely state of Jammu and Kashmir. Indian Air Force evolved from a mere coastal flight in 1932 to what's perhaps the most incredible war Indian Air Force was involved in in 1947-48 in the state of Jammu and Kashmir when Pakistan attacked it. It was a great miracle that the Indian Air Force provided in that war and that Jammu and Kashmir would not have been a part of India today. Ladakh certainly not if the Indian Air Force had not airlifted troops into Srinagar following the attack by Pakistani irregular and subsequently regular forces and uh, ensured that fighter aircraft were deployed in that war of the Pakistani regular forces, in fact, to throw them back uh, beyond the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Indian Air Force never shied away from protecting the people in need. It embodied the spirit of India. favoring peace was frequently disturbed by powers of war. Mainly India-Pakistan War of 1965, Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971, and the Kargil War. For the first time in 1965, Indian Air Force conducted independent raids. They were not supervised or instructed by ground forces but were developing strategies in tandem with the ground forces. By 65, Pakistani General uh, Ayub Khan and his foreign minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto had realized that 62 had demonstrated that India was militarily weak and the only way to gather Jammu and Kashmir once and for all was through a military action. And the first action they undertook was to infiltrate people into Jammu and Kashmir, hoping that the Kashmiris will rise in revolt against the Indian state, and then they will be able to use a military action, which was the infiltration was called Gibraltar, and the military action in the Chamjorian sector, so as to cut off Jammu and Kashmir from the rest of India, was called Operation Grand Slam. A large number of 40 sorties were flown by these helicopters, actually firing guns and miniature rockets at those forces which were intruding and infiltrating. The Air Force roles are classic. The first is to try and win the air war. And the second is to be able to defend our own country. And the third is to support our army. We did all three. We did all three in varying measures at different times and the percentages differed from as the war progressed. Towards the end, we were only supporting our army. And I think we did reasonably well. It's amazing. I must mention that in both... It's amazing how much money has been schedule. spent for simply the sole purpose of destroying each other. Yeah. <laughs> The joint operation with the Army and the Air Force. Everywhere. Uh, oh, yeah. Very, 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 all over the world. The U.S. famously spends a lot of money. 
1971, it was a showdown between three Canadair Sabre MK6 of Pakistan Air Force and four Indian Air Force Canads at Boira. The Sabres violated the Indo-Bangla border and were countered by the Canads. Indian Air Force seriously damaged the Sabres and brought the situation under control. I had the privilege to take part in that war, uh, basically in bombing operations, both in the yes, eastern sector and the western Wars, sector. I think in the history of Indian right. strategic thought yeah, and action, yeah. 1971 war can be really the golden Probably chapter wrong. because it's the One, first two, time three. ever in India's history that military yeah. force, particularly air power, was used to such telling effect that militarily India was able to create another country. The interesting part was uh, by 71, India had modernized reasonably well. Uh, Pakistan was in a relatively weaker wicket, although its air force was as good as it was in 65. But the problem was because Pakistani technicians were primarily Bengalis and they were not quite, quite loyal to the cause that Pakistani mm. believed in. 1971 war, uh, in the beginning of the year, that is 1971, a new unit got created. It was called at that time, the Tactics and Combat Development Establishment. The object was that here were a group of relatively experienced pilots who would train themselves and then train the others on the subject of tactics and air combat. But as you know, around March, the problem in Bangladesh, then East Pakistan had started. So we started our training and soon we used to be told that all right, uh, we were operating from Ambala at that time that, okay, from Mumbala, you go and attack Hindon, which is near Delhi, or you go and attack Halwara, which is near uh, Dudhyana. So we suddenly found that we were doing this reasonably well. That a rather difficult task, where they just wanted us to lock the bombs in the general area, we found that we could do it with some accuracy. They couldn't believe that over here, with training, you could carry out in those prehistoric aircraft low-level flying and hit targets by night. After about three decades of light border activities and constant modernization, Indian Air Force again took stringent action when Pakistan soldiers infiltrated line of control between India and Pakistan in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. This operation named Safed Sagar is another success story of this relentless force in the sky. I still want to go on one of those planes. No. After the war, I That'd was so in I charge of the air action. Probably throw yeah, up. Pass out and throw up. Yeah, yeah. great. But I didn't participate myself. Uh, you know, our entire planning had to be shifted when, at the last minute, when I was told, go, you can now go ahead and attack. He also said, stay on your own side of the LC. That made matters a little difficult for me because that entire planning was made. You see, an air force is an offensive arm. And if we had to win the air war, we had to go across the border and take action. But staying on our own side of the border really tied our hands. It was not so wow. easy. We lost one or two aircraft. We changed our planning systems mm. and we changed our pattern of flying. And we were always on the search to look for some juicy target on our side of the LC that we could attack successfully. And then we found one in Muntodhalo is the name of the place where there was a relatively large uh, ammunition depot, logistics Sweet. depot, admin depot. And well, we flattened it in one mission of four Mirage aircraft. And that was the absolute turning point because their the administrative machinery got curtailed, their supplies got curtailed, and all the people concerned, they were wondering as to how they can carry on. 
and we continue to attack these lines of communication is what we say. Basically, it's not lines of communication, it's supply. lines of communication for supplies. Right. And if you could hit those lines of communication, you are hindering and interdicting the passage of supplies to the forward troops. Right. And if you do that, mm -hmm. you are winning. Yep. And that's what happened. Indian Air Force forayed into relief operations too. Operation Rahat, where Indian Air Force extracted around 2,000 pilgrims stranded due to a flash flood, became one of the biggest civil rescue operations in the world. Heck yeah! Putting itself in league with nations like USA, UK, France, Israel and many others, Indian Air Force now inducts women in combat role. After years of discussion and debate, so the 2016 marks the commissioning of first batch of three women fighter pilots. Heck freaking yes. Total record that I was very closely involved with the induction of women in the Air Force. Uh, in fact, our Indian Air Force was the first service to induct women. Uh, that was in sometimes in 91, 92. And I do remember just for uh, a lighter, uh, uh, you know, a coverage of the subject, uh, that we went to the National uh, issue Fashion Design to ensure that uh, our lady officers are, uh, are uh, <laughs> their <everywhere>. proper dress <laughs> so they don't look unladylike <laughs> and yet yeah, are true. solid. Air, air person pilots. In actual fact, the first lot of women are at the moment the penultimate stage of their training as fighter pilots, and I think that should all go well. Uh, in so far as uh, women in other branches of the Indian Air Force was concerned, may I once again tell the viewers that the largest complement of women officers in the armed forces is in the Air Force, not in the Army and the Navy. Mind you, the Army strength is four times uh, in the IAF strength. Uh, Navy is about little over half IAF strength. So Indian Air Force is way ahead. We also found their performance as officers was in no way sec second to uh, the men. What a shock. So they also in many no. ways lay, out, lay down standards. You're in a, you know, I mean, a woman could fly a plane so the men as well, then, not better than a man. Uh, prove themselves as they are, being better right. because they're competing with women. And it's likewise for the women because they feel that they must be uh, get the better of uh, the man. Women feel like they got the better of the man, do you? 2016 like, also saw the induction of the like indigenous fighter jet stations. Exactly. As MiGs 21 are turning obsolete, pages are expected to replace them. We now have this aeroplane which is ours. It is ours in every respect. And over a period of time, blind. we will improve on it. And when we do, we will have an aircraft which is far superior to anything that would have happened elsewhere. I think the viewers really? need to understand that Pages has not been inducted into the Air Force. Yes, ceremonially, yes, most certainly, two aircraft from the 45 squadron of the Indian Air Force, uh, which, has, which was number plated earlier and has now become active again with two aircraft from its child. It's been located in Bangalore, which itself so indicates cool. that the teething problems in increasing the numbers of that squadron from 2 to 16, which should be the minimum number the squadron must have, those have yet to be resolved and it will be many years, be those years before they just can I've be effectively in flying you? in oh, yeah. the Indian skies. Like at an air show? Yeah, but it's really eyes and my military future, knew it. Indian Air Force oh, yeah. were allowed to go other into planes, but technology for your wise fighters and drones. Fine one, yeah. one day, I would love to. The nation is proud of Indian Air Force. That's true. It salutes its flight to glory. <laughs> it so feels like an old high school movie. It does. Jai Hind.
Yeah. Jai Hand. Jai Hand. So thank you to everybody who uh, serves in the armed forces. Yes, yeah, Air Force my especially agent. today. Um, that was quite interesting because I, it seems like most of their wars are between India and Pakistan. Yeah, India doesn't start fights. That's true. They're the only nation, right? That's what it says, right? Yeah. Only nation that has never instigated they a war. They don't instigate. And I know there's people who would take exception to that and wait. We understand the complexities of Kashmir, so we don't even need to get into that. No, no. Yeah. Um, but yes, they're, they're, they're known. They, they don't, they've never done any, they've felt no need to expand. Everything they do militarily is defensive in their motivations. Yep. Um, and it was interesting. I, I've always wondered what it's like for a soldier to be in a situation where they militarily believe that the strategy to do is actually not the one they're on. Like, for example, he was in the plane and he was thinking, if you want us to do what we need to do, we need to hit their front lines. We need to just pound the front lines. And he's told, you can't cross this line. So he has to submit to orders, even though he's in his mind thinking, the better thing to do is this. Oh, yeah. He's trained, all right, and he focused on what he can get done and did what he can get it done. It happens all the time. All the time. Um, the most, most amazing thing to me is soldiers that they know full well that what they're going to do will probably get them killed and they don't necessarily agree with what it is they're going to go do. And they just do it anyway because they're soldiers. Yeah, I watched this video with a bunch of veterans talking about different various things they agree or disagree with. Um, and they were talking about... Um, uh, like certain people that have to protect the president. Yeah. Regardless of who it is, if they agree with him or don't agree with him. Correct. They said, I could hate this guy, right. but it's my job. I have to protect the president. I, like if, if, if bullets are in the air, my mm -hmm. life will be on the line mm -hmm. and I will, I will lay down my life for a guy I despise. Yep. Because it's my duty to my country. Or even for Which a mission. I, uh, yeah. Or a mission like in here at the United States, the most complicated military mission we ever had in terms of the moral conundrum that happened with soldiers and with our country was Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> and so many soldiers, especially the, like the, the soldiers of that day were the kids of the World War II vets. Mm -hmm. And they, many of them really wanted to serve the way that their, their dad served. And they were, you know, what, who couldn't be more proud of serving in a war that was stopping Nazi Germany? Yeah. I mean, and, and, and the, the axis of evil. Then you went into the big mistake of... <laughs> right. And then Vietnam. Vietnam. And you had, unfortunately, there's so many soldiers still around who here, who when they, they were fighting that war, didn't even, they didn't know what they were fighting for. But that's not the point of a soldier. And that's just what amazes me about soldiers, among other things. Which is you, you, one of the reasons I, I respect almost all soldiers, regardless of where they are, as long as they're not, like I said, a terrorist country. Yeah. Um, just because it's not, even if they're doing something I don't agree with, it's not them. They're, they're putting their life on the line yes. for their people and their country. And the spouses, it, we said this before, yeah. the spouses and the mm -hmm. kids of soldiers who, they aren't on the battle lines, but every day they're thinking... I hope my loved one doesn't yep. die today. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, and also, yeah, the thing I was saying, um, somebody told me that uh, in the Sikh videos that um, that we reacted to, they oh, had a huge part. They were like one of the biggest, Dundra. actually, like um, people there because they were part of the British Army, I believe. Um, and they, they weren't anywhere to be seen in Dunkirk. Why? Which I'd be interesting to talk to. No, I'm assuming Nolan didn't know. That would be my assumption. Maybe no he, he no, but how does he not know that if he's doing a pick on Dunkirk? I'm sure he did. His history. experts might be British. Yeah, <laughs> that would suck. If I did a film on Dunkirk like that, like Nolan did, and then I found afterward I had missed an entire group of people who served, that would piss me off. Yeah, that would really piss me off that I didn't capture a group of people that that are in that. So yeah, yeah that. That was uh, yeah, when I found that I was like, "Oof!" Are there? I, and I was I'm watching this. Didn't know how many films are there that depict the stories that we were hearing, some of these missions and stuff. Because I was thinking immediately about the most recent one we saw, and the most recent military was Uri. Yeah, which is about a real military event. How many more films do you have about uh, military events? I'm sure there's a bunch. I'm sure there's a bunch. I mean, there was Kasari earlier, and that was right. the, the the six. Yep, and uh, and uh, um, oh, good grief! What with Ali Abad? Oh, uh, Razi. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I'm, th they, I'm sure there's literally tons, thousands. And there's a stupid baby right now going. I have been telling you about this film <laughs> since February. I've messaged you on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. 